Hi, everybody. This is Stephen Rosell, Senior Maya Specialist at Autodesk. And I recently put together a Maya for Motion Graphics webinar where I covered a range of topics, uh, including uh, Illustrator, Vector Graphics Support, Photoshop integration, or PSP integration. Uh, I covered MASH, and I covered uh, general text animation, and a number of other things. Uh, and then lastly, I covered uh, After Effects integration, or interoperability, I should say. Uh, but that was for Maya 2017. In Maya 2017 Update 3, uh, we have extended the interoperability between Maya and After Effects significantly. So you'll see this scene here, which is made up of a bunch of Maya objects. So I've got uh, the letter M, which was generated from some vector graphics. I've got this kind of procedural uh, animation, uh, these pieces here, which were created with MASH. I've got some flying text, which was created with the type tool, uh, and so on. Um, so these are all 3D elements. And then I rendered these out in independent or individual layers. So if we go over to After Effects, uh, and I play this back, uh, you can see the compare and contrast here. This is actually the same look, but it's actually made up of the 2D elements. So this is the rendered type of text. This is the rendered logo. And then I've got a separate background, basically. So I've got it broken down into three simple layers. Um, so now if I wanted to go in and uh, maybe add a 2D element to this, I can go back to Maya and I can track those 3D objects. So let's go back to Maya. And first, what I'll do, actually, let's just put these on split screen just so I can see both at the same time. It's a little hard to see everything. Let's just maybe maximize my space here. So I want to track that letter M. So what I'm going to do is create a locator. And now you can see that locator is right there. So I'm going to go to the, the final frame here. And I'm going to just snap that locator down onto the corner of the M. Now you can see as I scrub the timeline, Locator is moving because the camera is animated, but it's not tracking the M. So what I want to do is take the M and then take that locator, and I want to create a parent constraint. And what that's going to do is it's going to force the locator to follow the position and orientation of that letter M. Now I want to send that tracking information over to After Effects. So what I'll do is open up under File the Adobe After Effects Live Link. And this is a little window that allows you to basically drag and drop objects from your Maya scene that can be sent to your After Effects project. So I'm going to take the camera aim and the camera itself. I'm going to control click the locator that is created, drag those in. Those are the objects that are going to be sent to After Effects. Now, under After Effects, once you install the plugin, and the instructions are fairly straightforward, but once you do, uh, you go to Extensions, and you open the Maya Live Link, and you get a very similar window. And then it asks you, would you like to override the composition's preferences? That's fine. That's the same right now, because they're, uh, they're both set to HD resolution. Um, but now I've got a live connection. When you see this green dot, or when you see this green here, that indicates that there is a live connection. So. Uh, you could see that the locator tracks the M in Maya. And then if I were to go in and scrub my timeline in After Effects, you can see that the locator tracks the M, the rendered M, in, in the After Effects project. So now what I could do is I could take a 2D element and I could attach it to that, basically. So let's do that. Uh, let's actually go in and we will take the Maya text. You can see that's a rendered element. I'm going to hide that. And instead, I'm actually going to go in and let's maximize my After Effects UI for a second here. I'm going to go in and I'm going to create some text or some type. So I'll just go to my horizontal type tool. I'll just drag a bar here. And then I'll type in Maya 2000. 17. And I'll take that and we'll just scale that up a little bit. Let's actually make that something like, uh, what is it, 90 now? Let's make it like uh, 160, nice and big, good enough. Um, and then I might want to change the font, actually. I can go in and you know set different fonts. Actually, I'm going to use the one from Maya, the Maya Artifact. And what I want to do is now make this a 3D text. Uh, object. So right now you can see it's just a standard 2D text object. I'm going to click this button right here that would make it a 3D text object. And then I'm going to parent that to the locator. So here's the locator, which you can see right here. And there's the, the text. So I'm going to basically take this shift drag and parent it under the locator. 
And now, if I scrub my timeline, wherever that Maya logo goes, the text is going to follow. So now it's just a matter of updating this a little bit so that it aligns a little bit better. So I can just go to my transformation here. I might want to offset this a little bit uh, this way and then bring it down here. And I probably want to rotate that way in 270, and that should give me the right rotation. Uh, and then I'll just continue to kind of position and align this. So I want to set this to be roughly right about there so that it kind of lines up. And then I might want to actually scale it here a little bit. Anyway, I'm just kind of noodling it right now just so I get it into position. But what you can see if I pull in now is that that After Effects 2D element now tracks the Maya 3D rendered element. Um, but you can see there's a problem. So it positionally and rotationally follows, but it's huge coming in. And so it doesn't scale, basically. So this is a case where I could manually scale this on the After Effects side. Or what I could do is just throw this off to the side. I can go back to Maya, and I can add an additional constraint. So I will grab the logo, and then I'll shift select the locator. And I'm going to add a scale constraint. And when I add a scale constraint, what that's going to do is it's going to cause not only the parent uh, relationship so that it rotates in positions, but it's also going to scale. You can see that locator now gets smaller uh, at the beginning and then scales out at the end. So those will go into After Effects. And if I scrub, you can see that, sure enough, that text that I created in After Effects now scales. So it's very small at the beginning. It gets larger. Now, of course, I need to animate maybe the fade in, fade out of that. But in general, that's the look I'm going for. So now I have the option of my, my 2D created After Effects text, or I still have my original Maya text if I want to use that. But this just gives you the option of using 2D elements in conjunction or in combination with the 3D rendered elements from Maya. Another cool thing you can do is you can link the timelines between the two, which is really awesome. I can actually come in here, and with the live link in Maya, I can click this button right here that says Sync Timeline, and check this out. Now when I sync the timelines, now when I scrub through, you can see that I can sync the Maya scene. So I can probably need to give myself a little bit more room here just so I can see what's going on with the rendered side. Uh, but now as I scrub my Maya timeline, you'll see that the After Effects UI, or the After Effects timeline, will update so that if I just click or drag on the timeline, it's going to sync exactly between what I see in Maya from a frame perspective or timing perspective to what I see in After Effects from a timing perspective. Now, if I wanted to add new objects as well, I can. So it's just as simple as going in and saying, OK, well, let's create a plane. And then I'll scale that plane up, something like this. And maybe I want to put it you know, on the bottom of my object or something like that, whatever. Uh, and then I can do the same kind of thing where I can constrain these. I can just go in and I can create a parent constraint so it follows. And then I'll just take that plane, drag it over here, and bam, there's my plane in After Effects. So uh, now if I scrub my timeline here, you can see that that plane in Maya now syncs up with the same kind of plane in After Effects, which is right there. It's just being comped on top of everything else. But anyway, you get the basic idea. So that's the new After Effects uh, integration in Maya. It's pretty sweet and works pretty well and uh, pretty intuitive uh, as well. Now, if you want to know how to actually set this up, because it's not set up by default on the After Effects side, it is set up by default on the Maya side. Uh, but what you can do if you want to set this up is just go to Help and just go to What's New in Maya 2017. And that will load up the documentation. I just go to the 2017 docs. And if I take a look under Motion Graphics, under the Motion Graphics section, uh, towards the bottom, uh, there is Maya Adobe After Effects Timeline Compatibility. So you click on this Maya to AE, and this will give you a link to Live Link Adobe After Effects or AE Live Link Workflow. Uh, and then this gives you the information about how to set that up. In this page, it'll describe everything I showed, but then this is the important part. You have to download the Maya Link plugin. So this will actually send you to the Adobe, the Creative Adobe website, Creative Cloud Adobe website, whatever. 
and it will give you a link to uh, Autodesk Maya Live Link. Now, the one stipulation here is that you do need Creative Cloud. This doesn't work on the older versions of uh, Adobe After Effects. So you do need Creative Cloud version 2014 to 2017, but this is what needs to be installed in order to give you access to uh, this piece right here, which is the Maya Live Link. And that, again, would be once it's installed under Extensions right here. All right, that wraps it up. Hopefully you guys will find uh, some good uses for this. I think you will. All right, take care. Bye.